it is computers. All right, so how was, how's your week so far? Oh, okay. Uh, it's good. We have a hurricane coming tomorrow, and then we have another hurricane coming Thursday. So, um, yeah, I just, you know, stocked up on a lot of beer. Toilet paper? And a lot of flashlights. <laughs> so, What's your beer choice? Huh? What's your beer choice? Oh, actually, I don't, I'm not so much a beer drinker. Um, I like wine and other things that are not beer. Mm, okay. So <laughs> what kind of uh, wine do you drink? Mm, usually red, something a little sweet. Red? Okay, sweet red. I am not much of a drinker because I can't hold my alcohol. Oh, so Even like though I'm you... humongous, I have a very um, low tolerance. Same here. So... <laughs> Like I'll eat, I'll have like one can of beer. I'm like, yo, I'm I'm feeling it. I'm done for. <laughs> I'm good. I'm buzzed. They be like, yeah. use that one. I'm like, I know. I'm good. <laughs> it's great water. Yeah, like fabulous. All the minerals. It's yeah. actually cheaper, so I'm glad that I don't. It doesn't take me a while to get drunk. Yeah, no. So you're so, cheap. You're cheap date. Pretty much, cause I don't. What am I gonna spend money on? All right. All right. I Food? stock up. I don't know. I'd rather I, just like eat my calories. <laughs> exactly. I, I don't yeah. need to add those in there. I'm already having trouble reaching those. So, or <laughs> in your case, you're already having trouble like going past them. All that, all that alcohol is just going to add more to them. I mean, I guess being a, uh, a heavyweight and a super, he super heavyweight, I really don't have to give a fuck what I weigh. I could weigh 800 right. pounds. So, true. But I also don't want to weigh 800 pounds. Yeah, because that would be very very difficult it's very counterproductive for moving events yeah so welcome so. back to willpower today we have lauren wells lauren can you please just because okay so most of my audience most likely they do crossfit a lot so just a mm. little background on like what you do for fitness what i do for fitness um i am a professional strong woman or strong man competitor um it's like CrossFit, but slower. And it's like powerlifting, but like weirder. So um, yeah, basically I just find heavy things and I pick them up and I move them from one spot to the other. That's essentially what CrossFit is. I mean, yeah. that's strong, man, not CrossFit. <laughs> no, that's, so. how'd you even find, how do you try, how'd you find strong man or strong woman? What's the proper term um, also, so I don't like mess it up. Okay, so it's a little controversial. Um, I don't yeah. give a shit what you call me. Um, the sport is called strong man. Right. I usually call myself a strong man athlete, mm. but you'll have some women who want to refer to themselves as strong women. Some people think it's politically correct to call us strong women. Most of us don't give a shit. Okay. That's so, good um, yeah. So, um, but anyway, uh, what was the question? <laughs> oh, how'd you even find strong man? Oh, um, so before this, I, before my current job, I worked at an Anytime Fitness. Um, I was training out of there. I was working in the office. And um, during that time, I was doing bodybuilding. I quickly discovered that I was not a bodybuilder because uh, I like to eat too much. And right. I'm really nasty when I'm grumpy. So um, I left that life behind. And one of the members um, randomly sent me like the link to a local show. Um, I was only like a three hour drive away. And he said, I think you'd be good at this. And I read it over and I was like, mm, okay. So I started looking around town for um, like people who actually had the equipment because in Louisiana, it's still not a huge sport. It's growing. Um, but when I started about three years ago, I, I'd never seen any of the equipment around town. Right. So um, I got linked up with some dude that was working out of a tiny ass snap fitness and um he had a bunch of strongman equipment and um that's actually the owner of atlas my home gym the one i coach out of and um like i would bounce between commercial gyms uh doing what i could and his place using whatever equipment he had and eventually he got his own spot and you know we kind of grew from there but um i did the event it lasted like 12 freaking hours because nobody knew how to plan it and uh, it was fun, so I went back. <laughs> don't you <laughs> love those? One. Don't you love yeah. those when you're like nothing's going the way it's supposed to go? And yeah, Dude, the planning just like, sucks. Oh, uh, it was Louisiana heat on concrete outside all day. 
Um, middle of the summer? In the fucking summer. Every, every month is summer here. Every month, except for December. This is true. Um, it's a rule. And um, no, it was just, it was ridiculously hot. I think, I don't know if this guy had put on a show before or not, but um, some of the events ran long. And we actually had to cut the last event because it was running way too long. So, which is not uncommon for strongman. Um, typically, they start around nine thirty, nine in the morning, and they'll run till about four, five, or six is typical. But I've had some run until like eight or nine. Oh wow, it's a bit much. So, have you always been in the training field, or like what's kind of like your background with everything? Like, did you play any sports in high school, college? <laughs> Um, okay, so I've always been chubby, and when I was in <laughs> middle school, I, um, I was super chubby, so my mom was like, you're getting on a diet, one, and um, two, you're going to start playing sports, and I found out that uh, being big, I had a little bit of, you know, it was a little beneficial in sports, mm -hmm. so um, in high school, I played volleyball, softball, soccer, and track. Okay, I see and, you out here. Um, Athlete. I, yes, I was an athlete. Um, I was okay. I did okay. Um, I was going to play soccer in college, but by the time I got there, I got through tryouts. I walked onto a local smaller, like, institution. And at that point, I was just burnt out. So I went through college kind of like, you know, not doing anything active. I put on, like, the college 80 Oh, right, is it, it like it a, now 80 pounds? I thought it was a freshman average. 15. I don't okay, know. Well, I, don't know I um, am an overachiever. I don't know if I mentioned that. So I, like that. I went for 80 and um, I got up to about 310 pounds, 300 some odd pounds. And um, I was just fucking miserable. I was uh, like, I was completely different than I am now. I was introverted. I, you know, didn't want to go on dates. I didn't want to move. I didn't want to go you know, I don't want to wear certain things. Right. Um, I was just, I was very anxious. I was, you know, dealing with some depression. Um, so at one point in college, I picked up Taekwondo. Um, I think that's where I started. It's either Taekwondo or running. They kind of happen simultaneously, mm -hmm. but, um, I trained and got my black belt in Taekwondo. And then one of my best friends was a marathon runner. So I was like, hmm, I'll try that. It was awful. I ran a whole marathon. Um, Ooh. I chased like a motherfucker and I never did it again, but the thigh rub is real. Dude, I've always had thunder thighs and yeah. yeah, that was, that was a rough one, but I was proud. And that In Louisiana my, heat? Uh, huh? Louisiana heat? Yeah, that was rough. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm never doing that again. You can't pay no. right now. I would, I can't even consider even running a marathon. Mm -mm, nope. Nope. I'll do a 5K. Not That's probably the max I'm at right now, a 5K. Nope. Nope. If I'm running, it's because something's chasing me. <laughs> I'm not doing it anymore. Nope. Being in the military, but, um, I have to. So that's why. You do what? Being in the military, I have to. I have to, like, be able to oh, run Oh, it sucks. Miles. Yeah. Oh, it's that's it, disgusting. At least, at least run two miles. I'm like, ah, I'm fine. Whatever. Mm, nope. Nope. Just leave me. <laughs> platoon go on um yeah. so uh after that i just i started looking up different ways to lose weight um i quickly realized that i probably shouldn't eat like an asshole and shouldn't eat at midnight every night mm -hmm. um so i cleaned up my diet started lifting um i did a lot of self-learning a lot of reading a lot of trying new things you know creepily watching people in the gym trying to pick up tips um yeah very creepy, yes. Uh, I enjoy creeping people out. Um, then I got down to about, probably about like a body weight of 180, and I decided I wanted to go for a bodybuilding contest. Um, and at that time, I was working at Anytime Fitness. I was training. I got down to 160 when I stepped on stage. Um, and around that time that I was in the middle of my performance, I decided, nope, not a bodybuilder. And, okay. um, but I did learn a lot. Like I learned a lot about, you know, how to diet down a lot about, um, you know, peaking and um, how important, you know, different macros are for different styles of lifting. Um, but after that, once um, the guy from Anytime Fitness mentioned the strongman thing, 
Um, after that, I made a career change. Um, my day job is uh, I work for a, an investment advisory firm. Um, so I made the career change um, and kind of chilled on the whole coaching thing. I had a bad experience at that Anytime Fitness. It was just kind of like a toxic environment. Mm. Um, so ended up leaving, um, chilled out on the coaching, just kind of focused on myself, really got into more of like the powerlifting style of lifting. Right. Um, took myself through a couple of strength blocks, did pretty well. Um, I've always been kind of naturally strong. So, um, and this kind of stuff is always kind of, I picked it up easier than, you know, like math. So, yeah. um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, after I, you know, won a couple of competitions, um, I, got, I went to nationals, uh, for one federation my first year. Um, after nationals, I went on and I, uh, won first place at pro women's worlds in, uh, one of the federations that was the end of last year. Um, Recently, I started coaching at Atlas, and uh, yeah, that's about it. That's where I'm at. So, so, like, when did you? When was around? When was like that big transformation for you? That you had like a completely different mindset for who you were, how you felt more confident in yourself. Did you start reading more. So, like when you go, when you lose over about a hundred pounds, <clears throat> um, there are things that are left behind that you don't necessarily want. So around the time that I finished up my bodybuilding show, I had a pretty bad rebound after that show. I gained about 40 pounds. So I dropped back down to a body weight of about maybe like 185, 190. Okay. And I had a lot of excess skin. So I had skin removal surgery on my abdomen. And I also had um, skin removed from my chest mm. and I had a breast lift. Gotcha. That was really the biggest turning point as far as confidence because I took my body pretty far. Um, but that was something that was still going to bother me. So I, I don't regret getting it done. It actually, I mean, it, it made a world of difference. Right, so right. as far as like my confidence levels, that's really a big turning point. Um, Another big turning point is actually getting started in strongman and competing because it forced me to focus on how my body performs as opposed to what my body looks like. Mm -hmm. I mean, at this point in my life, I don't give a shit what I look like. I know I look okay, but I would rather, <laughs> like, I know I look okay, um, but I'm way more focused on, you know, the, my next workout. Uh, being technically efficient, you know, pulling more weight. I, I want to perform better. I, I don't care how much I weigh. Right now, I woke up this morning at 212 pounds. Woohoo! The old me would have just been super embarrassed, would have just been devastated at that number. The new me is like, shit, I look great for 212. So, um, yeah, those are probably the two biggest turning points. Um, a third smaller one, um, is probably leaving a, a toxic relationship yep. that was yep. kind of holding me back. Um, it was a long-term relationship. It was five years, um, but we had just grown apart and strong man. Well, my, my lifting life, that, that side of me just became such a big issue between us um, that I, I, I didn't feel like I could be myself completely. Mm, yep. Yep. I so like, like yeah. yeah. So once I got out of that relationship and I kind of healed from all that, that was probably the third and final turning point. Do you think and I was able to let that that go and take that wet blanket off and just kind of, you know, flourish? Yeah, um, is it hard having relationships with like you being such a pro athlete right now? <clears throat> um yeah. I it was hard with my most recent one because when we met, we were a lot more similar. Um, he was a lifter. He understood, you know, that drive and that lifestyle. Um, he was with me through my bodybuilding shows. Um, but at a certain point, he kind of went another way. 
Um, he stopped going to the gym. He stopped being as understanding of my hobby. Um, there was a lot of jealousy. There was a lot of um, negativity regarding anything that involved strong men or anything that involved the gym. Um, yeah. So yeah, that became really hard. That was a really hard situation to be in because I've found a very good balance between my professional working life and my professional athlete life. Yeah. Um, and I make damn sure that it, my life stays well balanced because I'm very busy and I can't yeah. afford for things to, you know, go willy nilly. But um, I had a really good balance going and to, not to sound like a snob or anything, but so, he, he couldn't keep up. Mm, yeah. So, um, and that was, I mean, that was not the only reason that that relationship ended, but that was a big sore spot. Um, that is also another issue that a lot of women who are at the elite level or at the professional level, or even just women who lift in general, um, they come across guys who are, I'm sorry, but insecure being with a woman who is strong and who's don't not be, afraid to don't be, be sorry. confident. Don't be sorry. I'm just saying, like, you know, <laughs> handle your people. I don't know what to say. <laughs> they get embarrassed by us. They get, no. you know, scared to be, you know, outshined by us. Right. But, you know, I'm with somebody now who thinks it's fucking amazing that I can deadlift over 500 pounds and that I can pick up 300 pound stones. Like, he's like, do more, go heavier. Like, what's That's your awesome. next competition? What record are you breaking next? And it, it's, it's been a really cool, cool experience. I mean, breaking up with anybody sucks, but yeah. seeing the difference between being with somebody who fully supports you in all aspects of life and having been with somebody who only supported you in the aspects of life that he felt comfortable with, there's a massive difference there. And, you know, now I'm flourishing as an athlete and even more so as a professional human. Yeah. So, um, do you, do you but, feel a lot of women run into that issue? Yup. I, um, I run a Facebook page called women of Strongman, and it's a women's only Facebook page. Um, that topic comes up a lot. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty common. Um, I was actually just talking to a friend yesterday who just left a, a, a relationship um and one of their biggest things that they were headbutting on was uh her dedication to a sport so i mean it sucks it, but it is on one hand i get it it's a completely different lifestyle than the norm you know like when you're an athlete your whole life basically revolves around that next training session that right. next competition that next meal you got to be aware of your sleep habits you got to be aware of what you're putting in your body you got to be aware of you know how often you eat what you eat next um so yeah i think i think it's important to have somebody that's in that world or at least is willing to put up with that world yeah, yeah. so and it's just it's tough Dating's tough in general. Dating's really Very fucking tough, tough when you can pick up 800 pounds, you know? So. Yeah. I can't even, like, I, like, I'm even a, I'm a guy and I can't even, I have, like, some issues also with, like, because a lot of people don't understand, like, you said, like, the lifestyle and what all it brings. Like, yo, like, yeah, I can't go out and drink on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Hence why my tolerance is super low. And, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, <laughs> I mean, like, not to mention, but. Because no, I get it. Like, I. I don't go out and party. I don't go out and drink, you know, um, being a, being in a strength related sport where at least this year, like I didn't have to cut for any of my competitions. I have a little bit more leniency on like where I can go and what I can eat. And I don't worry so much about that as much as I did with bodybuilding. That was awful. Yeah. Like <laughs> not being able to eat on Thanksgiving. No, thank you. I'm sorry. That's my favorite I, I holiday. Until I look pregnant. Like that's just how it is every <laughs> year. But, um, no, but it's still, it's like, I don't, I have to go to bed at a certain time or I feel like shit the next day. Mm -hmm. It's simple, but like some people would have an issue with that. So, I mean, it's just a completely different lifestyle.